This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with the chairperson of the National Commission for Women, Rekha Sharma, on women empowerment. The interviewer is Aditi Tandon, journalist. Violence against women has been rampant in India for many decades now. It hinders educational attainment and the earning potential of the women and has significant economic and social costs. COVID-19 of late has exposed the fault lines of gender equality with increases in the incidence of domestic violence during lockdown and the nature of crime in general has undergone a change. So, Ms. Sharma, as part of the new normal, everybody and everybody's world, as we know, is shifting online. What is the Commission's experience of this changing graph and what are you doing to ensure online safety of women? So first of all, in fact, during the pandemic, we also changed our nature of work online and we have learned it in a good way how to work online. And in fact, we observed that NCW could work more than usual working online. We saw that women are working online and the online crime against women was increasing and we saw that number is rising. We started doing many programs where women are aware how they can secure themselves online. In fact, we started this program, We Think Digital, with Facebook and Cyber Peace Foundation in 2019 itself. But in 20, we could reach out to 1,6,000 or so students, especially young girls, online and we made them aware how they can be secure online. And then we also had so many webinars during lockdown and also after lockdown where we talked to women in particularly how they can be safe and how they can complain on these issues where to reach. And also we took up this matter to the police where we saw that how they should take care of these complaints. We also had a meeting with all the social media platforms where we talked that how they should remove the content which was harassing women and how NCW and these platforms can work together to make women secure on the social media platforms. Ms. Sharma, would you be able to share any kind of instances or incidents that you may have flagged to either the social media or the police authorities in respect of online safety of women during these two years? Recently, we took you of the cases where I can tell you that the content from Twitter, we were able to persuade them to remove those postings on uh, Twitter, which we told them to remove. And we also took up with the police. So, ma'am, coming back to your important initiative that the National Commission for Women has taken recently in the way and form of a new helpline, which is a 24-7 helpline. Can you tell us more about this helpline and how is it different from the other helplines that are already in existence? So let me tell you, we have started this helpline so that women can reach us 24 by 7 because since the time I have joined NCW, I was listening to women and they were saying that we cannot reach NCW after 5.30 or on holidays. So because of that, we started this helpline. But then we thought that we should also start online counseling because you know the mental stress is increasing during the lockdown and women cannot share their problem with anyone. So we have started providing online counseling also. And this is different from other helplines because this is about NCW's complaint where women want to complain to NCW only and don't know how to lodge an online complaint or write an email. So they can just pick up the phone and tell us and our people will lodge online complaint for them. And if they need a counseling or want to ask where their complaint is and what is happening about their complaint, they can ask. So every data is there and especially this helpline will also help them to reach any hospital to police. But if you need a quick assistance from police, you have to dial 112 for that. So can you share the number of the National Commission for Women Helpline? Yeah, it is 7827717070. This is a helpline where you can reach us and lodge a complaint with the NCW and if you need counseling and if women need counseling for the family also, we will provide that. Coming to sexual assault of women and I'll also go a step further and include children. 
Of late, we've seen that sexual assault cases against women continue to rise across the country despite laws and despite many redressal mechanisms which have been put in place. If I look at Delhi's data alone, we've seen around more than 40% rise in the rape cases between the first six months of 2020 and the first six months of this year. How is the NCW responding to this uh, unabated rise in rape cases even through the COVID pandemic period? What are you doing about it? See, first of all, we have strengthened our complaint section where women can reach us and they will get immediate relief from us. Even in lockdown, we started one WhatsApp helpline where women who were facing domestic violence could reach us immediately. And that was also 24 by 7. Even at night, we were calling police and we were telling them to help those women who were calling us. Secondly, let me tell you the things which come to us is after the crime happens. So we started awareness program so that society need to change, you know, so that the crime doesn't happen. So we have to change the mindset of people. For that, we started webinars and seminars to change the mindset of people. And we have taken it in a big way. We have also started legal awareness program with National Legal Service Authority. And now we are doing in every district so that women know their right and know where to reach when they are facing such kind of crimes. One big thing is that women should be economically independent so that they should not take the domestic abuse. Most of the time we have seen that domestic abuse happens because women don't have any place to go and they just suffer because they are staying with the same man who is beating. So we have started few programs also so that women can be economically independent. What have been the domestic violence trends, Ms. Sharma, because you were the first to flag the rise in domestic violence right at the start of the pandemic last year, we remember. Yes, last year, April, I think I started this uh, saying that, yes, we have seen in NCW that the cases of domestic violence increased uh, from April onwards. And last year, it was more than this year because maybe the lockdown was uh, long and uh, women haven't been able to share their problems with their families or not go out and stay with their families when things were happening. So they were reaching to NCW and that's why the number of complaints of domestic violence from April last year till uh, say about October, November, the complaints were more, but gradually it decreased. Ms. Sharma, we have of late heard very strange and shocking trends of rise in dowry deaths in some states. And we've also seen a big debate going on in Maharashtra with respect to, you know, a scam regarding pornographic content. Use of porn literature is not new in this country and a lot of governments have tried to regulate this but have not succeeded in the measure that they may have wanted to succeed. Do you have a role in these two areas? I have seen that even on social media platforms, lot of pornographic material is there where Children and minors can watch it because there is no control on social media. Everywhere you can see. And yes, we have taken up with these platforms that this content should not be available on social media platforms. Most of the time we have seen that not minors but adults can see this. And in our country there is a law that watching this is not a crime. But making it and distributing it is a crime. If you are sharing in a group, it is a crime. So... According to the law, we should move, we should act according to the law and NCW is also nearing the law and if any such complaint come to us, we do work on it. Right. In the wake of the nature of crime that is changing, also a lot of new dimension to crimes against women which have been added after COVID-19 pandemic. Are you proposing any legislative changes? Last year and this year, we have reviewed few laws where we thought that the review is needed and we made suggestions to the Government of India and WCD and relevant ministries. So we reviewed Domestic Violence Act, we reviewed Sexual Harassment at Workplace Law because we have seen that the number of cases in sexual harassment at workplace also increased with us. We also reviewed Cybercrime Act where we thought that few changes were needed and this year we are also now 
reviewing maternity benefit because we saw that though the government has given a 6 month maternity leave but the private organizations are not adhering according to the law and we need to review this maternity benefit act also so after your review of the sexual harassment at workplace law did you find any reason to make any fresh recommendations to the government yes we did find few things where we thought that ic internal committee where the number of members is less and especially the number of members from outside the organization should be more because most of the time we saw that the internal members are mostly under the influence of the seniors of the organization and most of the cases are against seniors where this committee is unable to help the victim we also saw that there is a clause where they can do reconciliation and we saw that most of the time people put pressure on the victim to reconcile with the person who who's done harassment so she has to you know under pressure most of the time so many such changes we recommended Ms. Sharma, you just mentioned about the need for financial independence of women because that's a very important part of women's empowerment. If we look at the female labor force participation in the country, it is much lower than many major economies. And even in household chores, there have been recent surveys that show that Indian women are putting in 18 times more hours working at home than men. So, how do you come in here to achieve these issues of gender balance in the work spheres and labor force participation? First of all, let me tell you that this survey which was done. there are few things which they didn't count like women are working in self help groups they never took into the consideration that so many women are working in self help groups or under mandrega women are working that was also not taken into the consideration which the survey they did but yes ncw is aware that not many women are at workplace and that's why they suffer in life because they don't earn their own money and if we want empowering women we need to empower them economically and that's how these are few new things which when i started this program firstly we took up these things in colleges where we trained girls how to be entrepreneurs so when they are in colleges we went with few successful entrepreneurs who could talk to these women we also invited bankers where they can tell them from where they can take finances and this year we started a small training program with i am bangalore on entrepreneurship and already more than 2000 women we have trained with i am where we were paying the fees with i am for this program and we are going to mentor them also with one of the agency on how to start a business so if they need seed money or anything so ncw will be mentoring them that sounds very promising i just have one last question for you we often see that there is a multiplicity of women's helplines in the country every state has their own helpline and then there's a national helpline plus you know there are helplines being launched almost on a regular basis Can't something be done to have a national helpline, which is a really one-stop shop for all kinds of distress calls? We have a child helpline, which is different. A women's helpline, which is different. Is that something the government is contemplating? See, child helpline and women helpline need to be different. But yes, women helpline there is one one two, which is one helpline. Otherwise, states have started their own helplines and other agencies have started. But one one two is also connected with the one stop center but in future we are also trying to integrate this helpline with 112 or with the one stop centers so yes when we launched then secretary wcd when he was speaking at launch he was saying that in future we will integrate and we are going to think about it how to integrate our helpline also into one helpline thank you so much for your time thank you so much You were listening to an exclusive interview with the chairperson of the National Commission for Women Rekha Sharma on women empowerment. The interviewer was Aditi Tandon, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com. 